the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices has voted unanimously to add COVID-19 vaccines to the Federal Vaccines for Children program. The initiative provides thousands of free vaccines every year to children who otherwise might not receive them due to cost. As the country braces for a COVID winter surge, new cases, hospitalizations, and deaths thankfully remain down nationwide, according to the CDC. However, alarmingly, positivity rates now reach upwards of 20%. Some of the busiest neighborhoods of Manhattan, potential sign of what's to come as temperatures drop. Just this week, Dr. Anthony Fauci called two new BA5 subvariants pretty troublesome for their ability to spread rapidly and evade antibodies created by the vaccine and previous infection. So yeah, there was a lot of um, discussion mm -hmm. of this childhood uh, adding the, the vaccine to the federal, this federal registry for children. So this registry is just to make it freely available. Mm -hmm. um, there is going to be a separate meeting, um, I think taking place today or sometime soon, about adding it to the schedule for mm -hmm. childhood vaccinations. Um, which doesn't, I, I believe that doesn't um, absolutely mean it's mandated necessarily. That's still up to local jurisdictions, although there are probably many jurisdictions who just say what's ever on this childhood mm -hmm. list is, is mandated. That list protects, if that if vaccine's on that list, it essentially immunizes the company that makes it from lawsuits or liability. Like you just can't sue them over those. Mm. Um, and then many, you know, some, there's a general recommendation for children to get those vaccines. So yeah, I would be proceeding very carefully here because um, there is a lot of debate over whether children need this vaccine. And the other vaccines, which children do need, could come to under more scrutiny as people, people are going to say, some people are going to say, wait, you're saying I have to get COVID for my kid. I don't believe that. That's not true. I'm not going to do it. What are these other vaccines you're telling me yeah, I have to get? That would be an interesting backlash effect. Look, I think that it is kind of on its face troublesome to include a vaccine like COVID, which, and this isn't, you know, casting aspersions or conspiracy mongering. It just has not existed as long. It doesn't have as much testing behind the long-term effects of subsequent vaccines and boosters as a lot of these other uh, vaccines mm -hmm. that are already on the register, right? It just, it is not in that world. It was a vaccine that was developed quickly to meet an emergency. So glad it was developed quickly to meet that emergency. But as time goes on, more scrutiny should be applied to the vaccine to make sure that it is doing what it's supposed to be doing and doesn't have long-term effects that were unpredictable right. and, and that which frankly didn't seem to be as significant as the crisis we were needing to get through. Obviously over time, we have to have more scrutiny on these kinds of things. So immediately immunizing it from lawsuit at this, immunizing it, <laughs> immediately, yeah. immediately shielding it yeah, from, yeah. from lawsuit at this stage seems to be very premature and right. and, political, I don't know. And, and giving any um, uh, additional reason for schools, yeah. for and I, and I because right now, almost no, um, municip it's, it's, very, it's rare for municipalities to be saying kids have to get them, mm -hmm. though they are doing that in D.C. schools. Um, are they certain, still? Did it, did uh, it, they, might have, oh, they, they, they postponed it, okay. but they did, it, it's unclear. There's some, some hard nudging that you can kind of get around, in very, and it's not happening everywhere. But this could be a move, moves like this, because the, the, the political actors at the state and local level really do look on these questions. This is why Fauci, I don't think, can totally sidestep the, well, I didn't say to shut down anything. I didn't say to close schools. You know, I, I don't have any power. I don't, I don't, I don't flip that switch. Mm -hmm. But the people who do flip that switch are, are very keyed into what you and Walensky and others are saying. Yeah. And, they're, and when, when notes of caution are sounded, they behave cautiously. Or when notes of utter and absolute confidence in the vaccines are sounded, they reflect utter and absolute yeah, confidence. No, nobody wants the responsibility of being the one that made the decision. If you no. can appeal to some authority that is supposed to know That's better. Exactly what we're seeing. You're, you're going to do that. And we have not seen, uh, we have not seen uh, significant evidence that the vaccines are harmful right. uh, for children, but we've not seen significant evidence that it, it's, it's so much of an improvement over what their natural interaction with COVID would be, especially if they've already had it. Right. So given that, it seems very weird to, to put it on the level of that anyone else should be making that decision Needles. instead of the family yeah. and the child and their doctor yeah. um, seem like the relevant decision makers. Yeah. Well, it does seem like a good thing to have made it free. Uh, so this, sure, the first fine. part of the That's story, fine. making yeah. it free and accessible, I do think is an important yeah. move, as yeah, with all fine. medications. 
Well, in other vaccine news, the CDC now officially recommends Novavax boosters for people who received Pfizer or Moderna's mRNA course. The agency's data shows only 35,300 people have received Novavax's protein subunit vaccine as a primary series so far in the U.S. That's compared to some 372 million Pfizer shots, uh, 235 million Moderna doses, and 18.9 million Johnson and Johnson shots. So you can. So is this about some, you know, a, a lack of, you know, support for this vaccine in particular? Or do you think it's just the case that we're not being pushed to get vaccinated in the same way? Well, and that this, we were this is the vaccine that um, uses a different technology. If I'm right. Correct. I mean, wasn't the, the point of this yes, is that the, the people who were right. opposed to the mRNA, mRNA technology, yes. that skepticism of mRNA technology. Would, should be happy about right. this one. Right, and so they're now recommending this one as a booster, uh, as a good booster option for people who got one of the, who got Pfizer and Moderna, which was not something they said initially when it was authorized, uh -huh. um, which made it, which gave it a very, like who was gonna use it then? Um, because it made sense as a, as a you know, for, if, if you're vaccinated, but you're concerned about how much of this mRNA, mRNA technology you're ha gonna have to inject into yourself every how often, maybe this would be the one for you. So they've just, but before, you, you were not supposed to think that way. You weren't supposed to do that. But now they're saying you can. Again, showing that they you yeah, know, change a, their minds about weird, these things constantly. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, well look. Some we of all the expected them to mind. eventually say this. Yeah, so look, some of the changing of the mind is bad faith, and we've discussed that at length on the show. Some of the changing of the mind is learning things over time about how effective the vaccines are through cl clinical trials, which take time. You have to observe people over a period of time to know how effective they are, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, I don't think that all of the skepticism is uh, appropriate, but they are in a little bit of a, a weird pitch situation here from the government's perspective, because you, if you believe that the mRNA vaccines don't warrant any skepticism, it's weird to pitch the alternative as, hey, I know you don't like these other vaccines, which are totally fine, by the way, but here's what you should take if you, if you for some reason, you know, there's a way that you mm -hmm. can end up validating mm -hmm. concerns about the other vaccines if you pitch this to the audience that had those concerns mm -hmm. in the first instance. And so I wonder if that's part of why we haven't seen much of a conversation mm -hmm. around these vaccines uh, in, in the mainstream. Always have to point out whenever we talk about this that other countries, some of our peer countries in Europe, have, are not taking the same uh, tact with uh, with recommending vaccines for young people. Mm -hmm. um, they're they're not recommending them. Not, not only are they not requiring it, they're not even recommending it. So mm -hmm. it's different. <laughs> different people are looking at this data, and reasonable people can disagree, which is why it is so important to keep having these conversations and allow people to discuss them. It's not spreading misinformation or lies or conspiracy theories to point out that that different experts and agencies and, 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 and then just people in their normal and their lives are making different judgment calls and that's fine because it can be it can be a good choice for some people and, a, and, and a not a necessary choice for others even within similar age ranges people have different health yeah. situations yeah. Um, yeah, if you have sure. a, if you have a very unhealthy or immunocompromised young person who hasn't had COVID yet you might say that hey they should get you know, one of these yeah, vaccines, which something. is why it's a good thing but, when these things are free and, and broadly yeah. accessible. So we'll keep following that story, the story about whether or not COVID gets added to the schedule, and also these new variants that are coming down the pike. And stick around for more rising after this.